Hi, my name is Gavin, and I'm doing my final project on the country of Russia. Hospitality is a huge custom in Russia. This means inviting guests over to have dinner or just catch up and talk. And also, if someone else is the host, you are expected to leave a gift for them. Another thing that falls under the custom of hospitality is displaying kindness and animosity toward people from other places and other cultural backgrounds. A more silly custom that they have in Russia is superstitions, and there is a superstition for every day of the week, and they are as follow. On Monday, do not start out on a journey, as Monday is the most difficult day of the week. On Tuesday, it is the day to make changes in your life and to start journeys. Do not move into a new house on Wednesday, as it brings in bad luck. On Thursday, get whatever needs to be done, done, as it is the easiest day of the week. Nothing should be done on Friday that is considered women's work, such as crafts. Saturday, you must continue whatever you are doing on that day into Sunday. And Sunday, do not clip your nails, as you will lose your money and happiness. Now moving past customs, we come over to the idea of traditions in Russia. One of the biggest traditions is the idea of a Russian wedding. Engaged couples are expected to fill out marriage applications months prior to the actual wedding. And the day of the wedding, they have to go down to the registry office and get an official marriage certificate. Weddings are done on a large scale in Russia, whether it be the foods, the costumes, or even the activities. One of the popular activities is that the bride's parents will kidnap her the day of the wedding, and the groom has to pay them ransom, either jewelry or money, just to get her back. Another tradition in Russia is the idea of having a large family. Families in Russia don't include just parents and children. It also includes grandparents, uncles, aunts, nieces, nephews, and more. The groom's in-laws are called Gisht, which is father-in-law, and Dusha, which is mother-in-law. Whereas on the bride's side, they are called Sivukor, which is father-in-law, and Sikrov, which is mother-in-law. Now we move on to the category of arts and entertainment. Russia has strong traditions about performance arts, where world-renowned composers and performers play at their concert halls. The number one performance art in Russia is the circus, a show which adults and kids alike can enjoy. Another performance art in Russia that has been entertaining people for centuries is ballet. In terms of sports, the two most popular sports in Russia are soccer and hockey. But also, chess is considered a sport and it is very popular. Now moving on to the idea of religion. Back in 988 AD, Christianity was declared the official religion of Russia. But as it went on, Russian Orthodoxy became more prominent, leading it to be the main religion in Russia. The Russian Orthodox religion believes in the Holy Trinity, which is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Religion in Russia faced many challenges back during the Soviet era, because as the most of the Soviets were atheist, a lot of the churches in Russia were shut down. In present-day Russia, people are a lot more interested in Western-type religions, like the Baptists and Jehovah's Witnesses. Moving on to language, you can probably guess what the official language of Russia is. It's Russian. The Cyrillic alphabet, which is used to this day, was created by Cyril and Methodius, who were two Orthodox monks in the 10th century in Russia. Just so you can get an idea of the language, I'm going to play a clip of Vladimir Putin when he was elected in 2012. Особая благодарность, конечно, тем, кто собрался сегодня здесь, в Москве, всем, кто поддерживает нас в каждом уголке нашей огромной, необъятной Родины. Спасибо всем, кто сказал «Да!» Великой России. Я вас спросил однажды, мы победим? Мы победили! Now we're going to move on to the economy of Russia. Russia's economy is a market-based, globally integrated economy 
which means that they trade openly without economic barriers with other regions. The official currency in Russia is the ruble, and one ruble is approximately equal to $0.02 in the United States. Russia is an export of many natural resources, but the number one natural resource that they export is oil. Oil is responsible for over 50% of their exports, followed by iron and steel, which each only make 4% of their exports. Now, on to government. As per a constitution passed in 1993, Russia is defined as a democratic, federative, law-based state with a republican form of government. In their government, much like the U.S., power is split between three branches, the legislative, executive, and judicial. The current president of Russia is Vladimir Putin, and unlike the U.S., there is no vice president. Unfortunately, in Russia, the government often discriminates ethnic minorities and also religious minorities. Along with that, freedom of speech is starting to decline, as the government has a lot of control over what they want people saying online and what they don't. Now it's time to move on to social organizations. In Russia, ideology does not determine your social status, and there is still discrimination based on wealth, even without that class system. And as I mentioned before, families in Russia are very big, and it's not unlikely for two to three generations of a family to live together. Most Russians end up getting married between the ages of 18 and 22, which is fairly young. As per their roles, women are expected to stay in the home and do all the housework, as the family and social structure of Russia is very male-dominant. Although most of the things I've said about Russia have been positive, there are also some very bad things that go on. Russia's government is facing many problems right now. As President Dmitry Medvedev said, Russia had faced corruption a feeble civil society, terrorism, alcoholism, and smoking, along with saying that Russia had so far failed to fulfill its enormous potential. Violence in Russia is also a very huge issue. Back in 2013, Ukraine refused to sign an agreement with the European Union. This agreement, among other things, would force Ukraine to adhere to a certain European system, and to which they did not agree. This event, along with the corruption of the government, sparked violent protests all throughout Russia and Ukraine. I wouldn't have guessed this myself, but Russia's education system is also very corrupt, because teachers and educational bodies get graded based on how well their students perform. Because of this, learning is not very important to the teachers, but getting on good grades on tests is very important. And also, elementary school teachers are not even properly trained to teach the topics they are supposed to. Finally, looking at statistics, over half of Russia's population lives in poverty and can only afford to purchase basic necessities. And it's also predicted that with their current financial situation, Russia will enter a recession later this year. People say that as the rich keep getting richer, those living in poverty get more poor and poor. Economic-wise, Russia's minimum wage is $155, but it is calculated out to cost roughly $210 just to live in Russia for that one month period. So the minimum wage isn't even enough to comfortably support someone. So, that's what I learned about Russia. What did you learn?